Hello, Cologne. How are you guys doing? All right. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Keeley, and uh, welcome to Gamescom. It's awesome to have you all here for a very special night tied to uh, Metal Gear Solid and, of course, Kojima Productions and Hideo Kojima. Um, this is the official Gamescom preview event for Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, a game that I was lucky enough to uh, announce a few years ago on the VGAs. We're very happy to be here with all of you guys tonight. Gamescom is a big show and a show that has grown over the years. It's become the biggest gaming consumer event in Europe, and you guys, I'm sure, are here all weekend, right? All right, well, we'll start you off hopefully with some uh, cool new footage and announcements tied to uh, Metal Gear. Now, I'm really excited to be here tonight for this special event. Um, all the fans, of course, are here live in the audience. We've got uh, over 1,000 of you guys out there in the audience uh, ready to see some new Metal Gear stuff. I'm excited about that. And we've also got a bunch of people joining us live right now on uh, Twitch around the world. So welcome to all of you watching the, uh, the live web stream as well. We've got a really cool evening planned for you. Um, you're going to see a 15-minute uh, extended sneak peek demo of uh, the full Metal Gear Solid 5 demo that will make its official debut at the Konami booth uh, starting tomorrow at Gamescom, but you guys will be the first people in the world to see it. So what do you think of that? Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. We've also got a few other surprises for you. Mr. Kojima always has a few surprises. You've probably heard about that game uh, PT that got announced yesterday. Anyone hear about that? All right, well... I'll have to ask him a little bit about that as well. So uh, stay tuned. There's much to come. But uh, let's get tonight started uh, by welcoming uh, a man who I'm honored to share the stage with tonight. Um, he really needs no introduction, but uh, he is uh, the director of Kojima Productions and, of course, um, the man you know is the creator of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Uh, please welcome Mr. Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Mr. Kojima. Yeah. Hideo Kojima, everybody! <laughs> no cardboard box, though, uh, right? <laughs> Good thing I opened. Hello, to Gamescom の皆様、ケルンの皆様、こんばんは。ケルンに戻ってきました。Everyone here in Germany, I'm finally back here in Cologne. えっと今日はですね、スペシャルプレビューショーでこのショーに来ていただきましてありがとうございます。えー、それからスイッチで世界中の方が見られていると思いますけどぜひ楽しんで、えー、もらいたいと思います。So I'd like to like I'd like to、uh, thank everyone in attendance. Also thank so everyone watching on Twitch. Thank you very much. Absolutely.、Uh, well, we, I know you got some great stuff planned for everyone、uh, tonight,、uh, Mr. Kojima. So、uh, can you maybe、uh, tell us a little bit about what we can、uh, expect tonight? What are you going to be、uh, going to be showing us tonight? えっとですね。Lots of good stuff. I know you've got a demo you're going to show us, right? あの今日持ってきたのはですね、えっとファントムペインはオープンワールドでの自由潜入というコンセプトのゲームで、その自由度を皆さんにちょっと分かってもらうためのえっとこうプレイアブルデモを持ってきました。So tonight I brought up a demo. I wanted to everyone to get the concept of that we're trying to get here of free infiltration. So I brought a little bit, of, a little bit of sneak peek into it. あの E3 でご覧いただいたアフガンの最初のミッションがあったと思うんですけど、あえてあそこを今回もう一度持ってきています。So in E3 we showed a, a, a little demo of a, a stage in Afghanistan, and this time intentionally I brought the same stage in Afghanistan. あのまあリニアなゲームじゃないので、まあ。同じ目的地であっても自分でどういうルートをたどってどう行くかっていう戦略性がユーザーによって変わりますのでそこで違うルートを今日は皆さんに見,せ見てもらって時間帯も違うところでどうなるかっていうのをこれからご覧いただきたいと思います。Since this is not a linear game, the strategy is up to the player and we want to showcase that this time a different player, even if they have the same goals, they can use different strategies and we want to showcase that. So that's what we'll be showing to today, different strategies, different ways of playing and this is just another way of playing. So please roll the video. Check it out. First look at Metal Gear for Gamescom.
under total Soviet control. Miller's been captive for 10 days. Not much time left. The weather will clear shortly. Storm passing. Infiltration of the Soviet main ground forces. Should be the perfect warm up. You can't have much left in him. I give him three days, Tops. If we fail, he dies, we lose our chance of revenge. But we need more intel. If you just go charging into Doan Day, you'll be putting both your lives at risk. See what you can find out first. The Soviets have other outposts, not just the one you saw. Afghanistan is a big place. I expect you'll become quite familiar with those binoculars as you plan your next move. How and where you make it, well, that's up to you. From here on out, you're on your own. You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. That's why you have to handle this mission yourself. Put those nine years behind you and return this big boss. That's how Koss would want. I'll be sending additional intel by radio. Stay sharp. Not one of Miller's bodyguards survived. But they were good. All we found on the scene were their corpses and knees. You'll be missing them. And you're his only hope of getting them back. Hello everyone and welcome to the Gamescom 2014 presentation of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. Two months ago at E3 we showed off various features of the game as we snuck through this stage to accomplish our mission. Today we'll play through the same stage but show you how the same mission can feel completely different depending on the various factors such as route and time of day. Marker placed. Back at E3, you remember there were guards at this post, but you'll notice that they're not here anymore. So already we're seeing some variation in the mission. But that said, it does look like there are two soldiers heading this way in a jeep, so let's go ahead and leave a little surprise for them. Go on. Ah! 
Alright, looks like these soldiers are disoriented, so let's go ahead and Fulton them along with the jeep before they wake up. As you may recall, back at E3 we ran into a sandstorm which caused some problems, so to avoid that we'll minimize sidetracking and head straight towards our marker. Well, it looks like we have a goat here that's been separated from its herd, so let's see if we can help him out. And there he goes. We have a pack of wolves here too, most likely after the goat. Let's just keep our distance and continue with our mission before they come after us instead. Do remember that the landscape in the Phantom Pain is populated by various types of wildlife. And certain animals, such as wolves, can actually be dangerous, so you need to use caution when exploring the wilderness. Alright, so here we are at our vantage point. You have arrived at your destination. But first, what's this in the distance? Ah, well lo and behold, that's actually the vantage point we use at E3. This gives you some idea of where we are relative to our previous route on the other end of the base. That said, let's go ahead and mark the enemy. And it does look like the security is a bit tighter than it was before. You may remember that when we sneaked into this base previously, we created quite a mess. Uh, so the enemy has actually stepped up their game, and there are more troops here. And this is one example of how the game will actually adapt to player actions, and the same mission may actually be quite different when replayed. It was fairly easy to sneak into the space previously, but we'd have a much harder time if we tried to sneak in during daylight here. So let's go ahead and use our Phantom Cigar to pass the time. At night, as you can tell from the markers, it looks like security around our objective is beefed up. However, security around the rest of the base is fairly sparse. So let's go ahead and use that to our advantage. Oops, and it looks like enemies are wearing helmets now. The last time we played this mission, we used too many headshots with the Trank, so it looks like the enemy has countered by having troops wear helmets this time around. The point here is that if you overuse some weapons or techniques, the enemy will learn to take steps to counter your actions thanks to the AI capabilities of the Fox engine. The direct approach here will be difficult, so let's go ahead and find a way around. We're exposed on an open road like this. Let's go ahead and use our cardboard box to reduce our chances of being spotted. Okay, that said, uh, we have been noticed. This is a bad situation. We can't vacate the box without being spotted. We can try something else. Alright, the enemy's running up. But he's not engaging. He actually seems kind of excited. So what's going... Ah. Well, that would definitely explain it. Let's see you see this guy before he gets a little too excited. So this is just one example of several new modifications we've made to our cardboard box since E3. 
thanks to the various people we've recruited into our R&D unit. Even at night, you'll notice that the area around our target is actually pretty well lit, making it difficult to stay out of sight. So let's see if we can find a way to remedy that. This soldier may have some clues. Let's try interrogating him. Spit it out. The map has been updated. Okay, now we have the location of the power grid. So if we destroy it, we should be able to shut the lights off. Alright, that should make things easier. But the enemy is coming to investigate, so let's go ahead and hide in this trash dumpster. Sounds like there may be a helicopter incoming. Seems like the enemy has called in some backup. So the base is darker now, but we need to be careful to avoid the helicopter's spotlight as we head to the target. Target should be in this room. Let's take a look. So these are the docks we needed. Objective complete. Now all we need to do is escape. We need to move cautiously. Okay, we got some reinforcements coming in by Jeep. That said, their jeep just may be our ticket out of here, so let's see if we can confiscate it. Please select a landing zone. Landing zone confirmed. Alright, looks like the helicopter has moved into a holding pattern here. Which is bad for us. Uh, obviously we can't drive out of here on the jeep without being spotted now by the helicopter. So let's try something else.
right. So that takes care of the helicopter. Let's go ahead and call our horse and hightail it out of here. Mission complete. Thank you for watching. Seems like they liked it. Cool <laughs> look at the game. Uh, now, I know you've got some more to share about Metal Gear as well. Um, and you've got uh, something exclusive on the Gamescom show floor. So that was just the start of the demo. And I know you've got more content that if these people go to the booth, we'll get to see as well. Yes. At E3, we have a heli and a snake on the snake. Then, after that, we have a snake on the snake. Then, after that, we have a snake on the snake. Then, we have a snake on so, yeah, we have uh, something more for the Gamescom show floor. At E3, uh, most of you will remember that after this sequence, actually, uh, Snake goes back to Mother Base, and uh, the sequence ends up where Snake's Mother Base is being infiltrated by someone else that, uh, through the internet. え、誰かの基地に潜入していろんなものを奪ったり、え、そこで時間、えっと、ファントム<笑> in in the booth at Gamescom and the Konami booth, we will show the other way around. I mean by which I mean when the player infiltrates someone else's motor base and starts doing uh, using the phantom cigar, stealing things and doing different things. That's what you will be able to see when you come to uh, the ga uh, Gamescom Konami booth. Fantastic. All right. Well, I know uh, people will go check that out. Probably right. You're going to go see it at the booth, guys? <laughs> All right. Good to hear. Uh, now, I know you've also got some other stuff here to talk about and show for Metal Gear 5 before we move on. Um, so why don't you tell us about uh, this next, uh, next video that you have for us? あの、昨日のソニーカンファレンスでえ、公開した映像ですけど、え、自由潜入 so uh, yeah, yesterday at Sony press conference, we were we showed one of the several uses that we can give to the cardboard box, which is a pillar of this concept of free infiltration. Now I'm, I'm sure that some of you might not, not have seen it, so we're showing it again. Please roll the video. Cardboard boxes, here we go. <laughs> MGS players are all familiar with the cardboard box, but as explained previously at E3, the box has been upgraded with new abilities in Milgar Solid 5, the Phantom Pain, to offer players more options, such as the ability to pop out, take enemies out, and hide back in the box. You can also use the Fulton from within the box. And when you're in trouble, you can even vacate the box and use it as a decoy when it draws the attention of the enemy. Today, we'll introduce you to a few more ways you can use the cardboard box to your advantage. For example, we're out in plain sight here with the enemy up ahead. We can't vacate the box without being spotted, so we'll try something else. As you can see here, the box now features a picture of a saluting soldier on it. From a distance, you can use this to trick enemies into thinking you're an ally, and they'll pass you by. Huh? 
And it doesn't stop there. There are also other pictures you can place on the box. For example, we're in a similar situation now. But rather than saluting, the soldiers come running. I wonder why. Ah, well that explains it. Let's go ahead and take care of him while he's still distracted. And now it looks like we have a bed of roses? At first glance, yes. But if we were to unfold the box, you'll see that it's actually another view of our swimsuit model. And if we vacate the box and leave it here, it actually serves as a great tool to draw the attention of enemies and keep them distracted as we sneak away. These are just a few examples of the many new things you can do with the cardboard box, but we don't want to ruin all of the surprises just yet. So we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> wow, all right. Whoa. It's a live crowd. <laughs> I'll tell you how they feel, all right. Uh, so it looks like the box has a few more features now. Uh, Mr. Kojima, so uh, lots of the cardboard box. Hi, and actually, we have one more video of the cardboard box, one from brand new video that we'll be showing, so please roll the video. All right, well, that's very cool. Metal Gear Solid 5, Ground Zeroes, and Phantom Pain are both going to be coming to PC on Steam. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really happy you guys are so excited with the cardboard boxes. So yeah, it is coming to Steam. Of course, Ground Zeroes and the Phantom Pain both are coming. Now, uh, I know everyone here wants to know, can you tell us anything about the release date for... Uh, Phantom Pain or Ground Zeroes on PC, what can you tell us? <laughs> so, well, we cannot, we cannot announce a release date yet, but, well, of course, Ground Zeroes will be coming first, and then we'll be coming Phantom Pain. Please just stay tuned, and we're working pretty hard, so... Stay tuned. <laughs> and also, I mean, the box that you just saw in the video, you will be able to use it in the game as an item, and it will have the very different usages, so. <laughs> many, many more boxes to reveal. All right. Uh, there, oh. Oh. Who's that? 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 Let's take a look. Hello everyone, and thanks for coming to the official Metal Gear Solid V, the Phantom Pain preview event here in Cologne. It would have been my great pleasure to be able to be there with you in person, but we're just wrapping up another voice recording session here in Los Angeles. Now naturally, I can't really say too much about the script at this point, but I can say it's been a great journey so far, bringing Snake to life in his epic new mission. Now for this week and this week only, during Gamescom, Konami will be running a special pre-sale offer for MGS5, so stay tuned for more details. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the show. And in true Snake spirit, kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, well, that's great. Very cool. As Kiefer mentioned, uh, you guys here in the audience, there's a special uh, voucher that you can get uh, for that special pre-order incentive. Um, it's available at the booth, I know, and you guys can uh, get that uh, just for the week of Gamescom. And if you're uh, watching the stream and you live in Germany, I think those uh, vouchers you can pick up at the, uh, the Gamescom booth. And of course, if you're watching the stream worldwide, there'll be other uh, pre-order offers, I'm sure, announced in specific territories in the future. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, very cool announcement, uh, Mr. Kojima. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we've got a lot more to uh, talk about here uh, tied to We're going to do a Q&A session with the fans and things like that. So there's more coming up. Uh, where you can go, though, if you guys want to see the demo is at the uh, Konami booth. Uh, it is uh, booth 7 uh, dash one at the, uh, the Messe. Uh, so you can go check that out uh, starting tomorrow um, and uh, see the full demo. So what did you guys think of uh, the Metal Gear Solid 5 demo that Mr. Kojima had for you today?
It was very good stuff, Mr. Kojima. Wow. Thank you. There is more to talk about. We have to talk about uh, PT, and there may be some, uh, some updates on that coming uh, shortly for this audience, and we're going to transition now into a, uh, a Q&A session. Those of you who are uh, going over to the, um, the booth, just remember the full demo will be at the Konami booth, and right now let's uh, head on over here. We're going to do a Q&A session uh, with Mr. Kojima. You guys submitted questions online. He's going to answer those questions, and uh, we will also talk about... Uh, PT. <laughs> PT, hi. <laughs> hi you might know what that is, right? Right. 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 All right, well, uh, Mr. Kojima, you are here with the fans, and these guys submitted questions on Facebook and Twitter uh, to me and to Konami over the, uh, the past week, so we're going to ask you some of those questions and uh, get inside your mind, and uh, we'll talk about that PT thing soon. There's always a twist when it comes to Mr. Kojima. All right, um, first question that came from the Internet. Uh, if you could remake any game you've worked on so far using the Fox Engine tech, which one would it be? And why? Yes. <laughs> Personally, I'm not too fond of on remakes. I don't want to go and remake something old. But if it was as a producer and having some of my staff members going back to the uh, remaking game, I would have to go with uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. Like an MGS1 remake? <laughs> あの、ま、普通のリメイクじゃなくてもあれも16年ぐらい前のゲームなんで、ま、猿の惑星が今新しいライジングってあのやってますけど、ああいう感じで、え、ちょっと違うリメイクというか、え、昔のいいところ取り
、えー、人との違いによる争いを描いてるんですけどもレントゲンを取ると今の現代人っていうのは世界中のあらゆる人が同じスカルの形をしているっていうことも、まあ、象徴として使いたいので、えー、スカルフェイスの,その、えー、顔顔がないっていうのを、えー、強調するためのキャラクターを作りました。Also, another element, some of you might remember that last year at E3 we had some key, key art featuring Snake in X Race. Now,、uh, one of the themes of Metal Gear Solid V is race.、Uh, there are differences between each race,、uh, you know, skin wise or face wise or whatever it is, but actually, current、uh, humanity、uh, as it is right now, if they're looked through X Race, the skull, the bones are. Mostly the same for all people. So, this is also one of the subplots、uh, Skull Face representing this Skull, this faceless character、uh, being the bad guy. This is also one of the subplots that we have in Metal Gear Solid V. All right.、Uh, good and extensive answer. That fan will be happy.、Uh, next、uh, question is What has been the most exciting Metal Gear for you to develop in your career? I remember the first time I was over with you was,、uh, I think, 2001 with MGS2. I was visiting you at the office, but you've done so many games over so many years. What, what's your favorite one? It's a very exciting one. 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 It's a I mean, every game has been fun, every, every game has been exciting to make, but if I was to choose between、uh, Among Metal Gear, I would say、uh, probably the first Metal Gear that I work on,、uh, a game called Metal Gear, because at that time I was new to the company, no one understood, no one grabbed the concept of what, was, what I was trying to create, and still somehow I got it done, so it was、uh, quite、uh, memorable for me、uh, making that game. あとあの、まあ、メタルギアじゃなければですねあの、まあ、携帯機ゲーム用に作った「僕らの太陽」っていう「僕体」というのがあるんですけど、えー、当時はそのゲームっていうのはカウチで家の中でしか遊べない遊ば,な遊ばせないっていう、まあ、そういう時代の中で携帯機に太陽センサーをつけて外の実際のリアルな太陽を使ってゲームをさせるというそういうゲームなんですけど。それもものすごいまあ内外のというか特にうちの<笑>、えーまあ、スタッフからのまあ反対とかがあったんですけどそれでもいいものができたんで、まあ、僕隊も僕の中では非常に大きなチャレンジでした。And if I was to talk about non Metal Gear games, it would be probably Boktai, a game I developed. The, at that time, and the concept of gaming was merely you know, sitting on your couch,、uh, indoors, and I will. I want to take advantage of this portable device and add a sunlight sensitive device. So, the game, in a way, forced you to play outdoors. It depended on sunlight.、Uh, at, that, at that point,、uh, again, few people, especially internally, grabbed that concept.、Uh, so, again, I, it was a rough battle. I had to convince a lot of people. Somehow, I, I, made it done, I got it done. And、uh, in that regard, it was a very memorable game for me to work on. Okay.、Um, now, next question is a little out of left field. If you could play the lead actor in any movie, which movie would it be? I know, 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 They're awesome, so that's the kind of guy I'd like to be. Mad Max 2 no Mel Gibson, とか so you know. So, probably I would go with Mad Max 2, Max Max 2 Mel Gibson. But not the one from Mad Max 3, it's the one from Mad Max 2. マッドマックス2のメルギブソン喋らないんですよ。喋らなくてもキャラが立ってて、えー、ドラマをこう引っ張っていくというもう素晴らしいあの映画のキャラなんですけども、実はファントムペインのスネークもまあマッドマックスにも近いんですけど、ほとんど喋らないですね。喋らずに、えー、お話をどこまで引っ張れるかというのはもう今回のチャレンジなんで、そこもまあ重ねてみるとまあマッドマックスっていうのは僕の中では大きな存在です。So, I mean, in、um, Mel Gibson's character in Mad Max 2, barely talks to,、uh, through the movie. He's a very, very silent character, barely has any lines. And still, somehow, with his 
personally, he pulls the, the story, he carries through the drama, so that is a very uh, memorable part for me. Uh, so in Metal Gear Solid Five, um, <coughs> sorry, Snake also has very few lines. He's a, a character that barely speaks. So in a yes. way, there I see kind of a resemblance. Somehow, I see uh, in the end a uh, kind of a reflection of Snake and uh, this character of uh, Mel Gibson's uh, Mad, Mad Max Two. Do you see the new, that new uh, Mad Max trailer? Yeah. Pretty awesome, right? That was awesome. <laughs> I've seen it at the very least 10 times. <laughs> I want to make that game. I mean, someone <laughs> let me make that game. I've been tweeting, I want to make that game, but no one has offered yet. <laughs> we'll put George Miller in touch with you. I'm sure he'd be interested. Uh, all right, uh, next question is, how do you motivate yourself when you're feeling tired? Uh, the one thing that I always admire about you is your traveling around, all these events, meeting with people, you're still making these games. It looks like you may have two games in development. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, how do you stay uh, motivated? Mm. So, I mean, again, uh, creating something requires a lot of energy. And also, if it was something like that, it wouldn't be that bad. But also, I, I step in as producer, so I have to negotiate, I have to talk with a lot of people, which can become somewhat stressing. So uh, ideally, what I would do would be travel or you know play something or just enjoy my time. But I don't always find the time to do that. So what I do is then after I'm done with work and before I sleep, I will watch at the very least one movie. Every day? Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> なるべくね。あの、フォレモスパート。アイトライド、アイトライド。ま、ゲームズコムに来てる時は見れないんで、え、この4日間分ぐらいを日本に帰って1日に3本見ないといけないですけど。あ、あ、I <笑> 戦ってるわけですよね。I mean, in the end, movies are the same thing. They're created by someone. So in that regard, watching a movie uh, gives me kind of a perspective of someone behind this, trying to create all this, trying to conceive all this. And this gives me, uh, brings me back to myself, gives me a lot of hope and of ambition of what I can do. And also, of course, enjoying the movie itself, the joy, the, the sadness, whatever feelings the movie conveys to me. So in that regard, uh, for me personally, a movie is something that in a short time, uh, short time span, it lets me come back to myself and remember what I want, what I want to do. So they are the most effective thing for me. The most effective thing for me え、そのクリエイターが苦労して頑張ってる姿を見ることが一番こう元気になる。the one thing that gives me most energy, the one thing that really energizes me is actually not even the, the movie itself but for uh, the uh, when I'm seeing the documentaries of making of a specific movie that or some movies that didn't go that well through development and didn't end up well but you know you see all the, the guys trying really hard to make this. That's the one thing that really energizes me the most. Yeah. So you, you, uh, how many hours of sleep do you get at night if you watch a movie every day? I'm just curious. I'd say about four hours on average. Uh, <laughs> Hard-working man. Uh, I mean, for example, in our studio, we have one genius programmer, a French guy. Some of you might know him, Julian. Yeah. もうこの10年ぐらい計画的に4時間しか寝てないんですって。それでも頭はすごい回転早いし、健康であると僕にいつも言うんです。so, I mean, and always, Julian, uh, Julian Mercer, I'm sorry, he always comes to me and says, you know, for the past 10 years, I've been only sleeping, uh, scheduling only four hours of sleep, and I'm healthy, and he's 
really f fast uh, thinking and he's so smart. So he always approaches me and tells me this. Yeah, I only sleep four hours a day. I'm so healthy. It's so good. And on my hand, on my hand, there's a huge difference because I also only sleep four hours a day. But on my on my end, I'm barely trying and doing my best to stay awake with just four hours of sleep, trying so hard, going day by day. So it's the same four hours, but it's fairly different perspective. <laughs> この間病院に行ってですね、あのその話をしたら、えー、もうドクターから DVD を見るなと禁止をされましたけど見てます。Uh, actually, to be honest, I went to the doctor the other day and I was giving him the same talk, the same explanation of my daily routine, and he literally told me to stop watching DVDs. So of course, I pay little attention to that. <laughs> you ever fall asleep while you're watching the movie? It's not very good. 映画中に寝ます。映画中はなかなか寝ないですね。大丈夫ですね。あの会議中に寝てますから。No, I barely fall asleep、uh, when I'm watching movies. I mostly fall asleep during meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough.、Um, all right,、uh, next question from the internet is、uh, What's your favorite part of MGS5 TPP? Is there one, I mean, you've been talking about this game now for a couple of years. Is there one aspect that you're particularly excited about? ほとんどのゲームもそうだと思うんですけどゲームクリエイターがレールを引いてそこにプレイヤーを誘導してゲームプレイヤーが仕掛けた遊びをこう提供するっていう,こう一方的なインタラクティブなゲームの割には一方的なゲームが多かったんですけど。Pretty linear. I mean, they're an interactive medium, and despite that, the game designer traces a route for the player. The player follows that route that the game designer created, and、uh, you know, it's an interactive media and doesn't seem that interactive. あの TPP に関しては本当にそのマップを見て、えー、どこにどういう経路で、えー、いつ何時夜なのか昼なのか、えー、どうやって潜入するかを自分で考えてそれを実行して。それを、えーえーまあ、ミッションをこ,うこなして最終的にどうやって逃げるかまでを考えるゲームなんでそこが非常にこう本当の、えー、スパイ情報映画を自分で演じてるみたいな、えー、その自由度があるので、まあ、そこが僕が一番気に入っているところですあの他のゲームもなかなかそこまででもないと思いますんで。In the Phantom Pain, the Phantom Pain is a game where the player has to see the map, decide how to go in, where to go in, how... When and how to execute the mission with what is taking, and even plan the way out, how to get out of there.、Uh, the player has to plan the whole thing. In a way, the player has to reenact what would be a spy movie in his own. So that's the, one, that, that's the kind of thing I wanted to do, and that's something that I haven't seen elsewhere, and that's something that I'm very excited about、um, uh, The Phantom Pain. Ground Zero is a very small open world, but Phantom Pain is a very big place. えー、例えば最初の,あの数を助けるミッションっていうのはもう結構かかるんですよ時間が、えー、まあそれをまあ根を詰めてというかこう、えー、すごく緊張してやるので、えー、1ミッションクリアするためにすごい疲れるというのでそこは皆さん覚悟していただきたいとこんなに疲れるゲームはないと思うんで1ミッションやったらやっぱり半日ぐらい休憩しないと続けてはできないかもしれないそれぐらいのあ本格派というか本当に潜入している感じを、えー、与えてくれるゲームになっています。So in the ground zero, in ground zero, it was kind of a tutorial. So、uh, the open world was fairly limited intentionally.、Uh, what the player could do was somehow、uh, delimited. So It was clear to see what to do, but in the Phantom Pain, the first mission where you go and rescue Cass,、uh, it's a very stressing mission. I'm pretty sure people will, take a, will have to put a lot of effort, it will take a lot of time.、Uh, it will be a tiring game, you better be ready for that.、Uh, one mission will require, after you do one mission, you probably need a half day rest or something. Just get ready for that. <laughs> Good response.、Uh, Next question is What advice would you give to an artist or designer who's looking to get into ga the games industry and how did it all happen for you? I know, you know your background, obviously, going to film, you know, <laughs> researching movies and <laughs> film school and stuff, but what's your advice to someone who wants to get into the business? I think that the 
ダメな男やったと思いますあの非常に幸運でした自分の好きなものとか今まで吸収してきたものが全てこの仕事で、えー、フィードバックできるのでまあ偶然といえば偶然ですけど、まあ、映画を撮りたかったんですけど、まあ、映画撮れずにゲームデザインになって正解だったと思います僕の場合は。Personally, myself, I was really lucky to be able to, to end up making games. If I was making games, I probably would you know, not be a member of a person at all. Uh, I was really lucky to find a, a, a job where I can put,、uh, do an output of all the inputs that I've had, of all the things that I've absorbed up to this point, up to that point, wherever I was in life. I was able to create something. I was really lucky in that regard. Personally, I was very fortunate to, have this, to be in this situation. I was very fortunate to have this s I originally wanted to make movies and also. If not, the one thing that I want to do was being a detective in the LAP police department. I'm really glad I didn't get that job. Game is a very important thing to do. I'm going to be a detective in the LAP police department. I'm going to be a detective in the LAP police department. I'm going to be a detective in the LAP police department. I'm going to be a detective in the LAP police department. Uh, game making, in a way, is a kind of a very, very global art,、uh, global uh, concept where you have to know a lot of things, where it's human, beh-、uh, human engineering, psychology, different arts. You have to put a,、uh, there, are, there are a lot of elements that you can combine and a lot of things that you have to experience and or study and go through.、Uh, it's that kind of、uh, thing that you have to be able to know. あとまあやっぱりあのすごくエネルギー使えますんで好きじゃないとできないと思いますねあのえものすごく細かいところから広いものからそのえボリュームも含めてえ時間の拘束もありますんでやっぱり好きじゃないとえーゲーム一本は作れないと思いますんで。And also it requires a lot of energy. It requires a lot of energy, so you really have to. Like it, you really have to love、uh, creating things because it really requires a lot of energy. You have to think very detailedly and at the same time thinking very vastly,、uh, globally, and have a, a good brain to put all these elements from details from, to the macro to put all, all this together. So re- you really want,、uh, have to like creating a game. えー、新しいものを作ったりそれこそプロデュース業とかっていうのはそのスケジュールを守らないといけなかったりクオリティを守らないといけないといろいろあるんですけど意外とですね、えー、孤独です、えー、大人数で作っているようでいてゲームデザイナーっていうのは非常に孤独な、えー、戦いを強いられます。And also one thing、uh, might be that、uh, most people will find this、uh, rather strange but it's actually a pretty lonely profession I mean, most people know that games are created in teams. We have development teams.、Uh, also, you know, as a producer, you have a budget to keep, you have to, a schedule to keep. So、uh, you're in contact with a lot of people. But still, it's、uh, quite a lonely battle.、Uh, when you want to create something, people don't grasp it.、Uh, yeah, you have to go through it alone. So, you have to go through it alone. So, you have to go through it alone. えー、何人持っているかっていうのが一番最後の力を発揮するところだと思いますので特に内側よりも外側にいる人の方がまあ理解してもらえると思いますあの僕にとってのジェフさんみたいなものでそういう人が何人かいるかによってまあ戦い方が違ってくるとこれ結構重要なんでえそういう自分を理解してくれる人をまあ何人持っているかっていうことですね。So because of this, it becomes a huge force for you. When you are able to have someone that understands you. And this not, doesn't, doesn't need to be internally. In my experience, I found it more these people externally, people, in my case, people like you that understand what I'm trying to do. In the end, this counts a lot. It gives you a lot of energy when it really matters to have someone that understands what you're trying to do. Excellent. Well, yes,、uh, you inspire us too with、uh, the great work that you make.、Um, all right, well, that's all the time we have for the internet questions、um, for you, Mr. Kojima.、Um, but I know、uh, there's some other things that、uh, we might want to talk about too. So, I'm going to talk about it. 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 まあ、僕もテンションも上がってまして、えー、また
良ければ来年再来年と来れたらいいなと思います。Yeah, ま、しし thanks for everyone in attendance. I mean, it's the first time in five years that I've been here in Cologne, and I'm pretty excited myself. And hopefully, I'll see you next year and the year after next. Just a little bit of beer, too. Keep coming back to We have so many games you're making. Beer, too, sausage, have a lot of time. Yes,、uh, because I, I haven't found the time to eat. A lot of that beer,、uh, Kelsch, and the,、uh, the sausages, so I need to. I just want to say that I'm going 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 to say that Day, a lot of fans were really kind, bringing all, this, all these raw sausages, which are impossible to go through customs. So please,、uh, I really appreciate that, but、uh, I cannot take that home. So please don't. <laughs> Very cool.、Uh, well, before we wrap things up,、uh, let's move on to something that was the talk of the internet over the past 24 hours.、Uh, you were on stage yesterday at the Sony press conference,、uh, revealing some Metal Gear Solid 5 information. There was this mysterious.、Uh, Teaser afterwards for、uh, PT, which、uh, at the time Sony had said was a,、uh, a new game from、uh, a new studio.、Um, I think people downloaded that. There was a, a playable teaser, and、uh, those that played it、uh, were in for a bit of a surprise, I guess, because it seemed like at the end of that teaser, if you get through it and you play through it and you solve the puzzles, it seemed like it was revealed that you're working on a new、uh, Silent Hill game with Guillermo del Toro,、um, starring Norman Reedus. Everyone was talking about that.、Um, so now, this is the first time you're, I think, able to sort of speak about this.、Uh, tell us,、uh, what is PT? What can you tell us about it?、Uh, first off, in the audience, who played PT? Curious. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh so everyone is scared to play it, too scared to play the game? <laughs>、oh, they're probably traveling at home with their PS4s. Silent Hills is a little bit of a little bit of a little bit. So,、uh, as of now, I cannot talk too much about Sun Hills yet, so I'd like to talk a little bit about PT.、Okay. PT というのは、プレイアブルティザーの略ですね。So, first, PT stands for Playable Teaser. で、<laughs> あの、そうです、あの、深い意味はないです。Yeah, that's the point. There's no deep meaning into it. <laughs> で、あの、まあ、予告編とかティザームービーとかを流すんですけど、ゲームなんで、まあ、ムービーじゃなくて、本当にプレイアブルで、えー、自分がインタラクティブに遊ぶことでその、えー、タイトルとか IP にたどり着くようなものを作りたかったんでそれのまあ業界初の試みです。So, I mean,、uh, you see all these trailers, all these teasers, but it is a game, so I wanted to have something that was really interactive that you could play through. And after playing it, through playing it,、uh, clearing something, you would finally get to the IP or the title or whatever it was. That, that's、first. what I wanted to create, and I believe that's an industry first.、Uh, I wanted to be the first one. Yeah, it's very scary. It's 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 scary. So, this is a very scary game, and the last puzzle is ridiculous, difficult. This is completely intentional. I personally expected this to take at least a week to be solved, and I was really surprised it took less than half a day. So, yeah, I underestimated the current fans. The current players. I underestimated the current fans. 途中ぐらいからバレてたんで、それよりはマシですけど、ね。I mean, it's an improvement because when we show Moby,、uh, we show Moby Dick、uh, during the BGAs, but half the, the announcement, halfway the announcement, people already had to figure out. So I guess we're getting better. Sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> 昨日のまあ深夜に最初のイギリスの女の子を囲むツイッチの人々が解いたんですけど、あれがをしてほしかったんです。世界中の人たちとツイッチとかでつながって、あの。まあ、いろんな言語を解析しないと解けないんですけど世界中の人が、えー、P 一つのゲームをよりどころにしてコミュニケーションとして集まってみんなで協力して成果にたどり着くっていうそういうティザーゲームを作りたかったんでそこは、えー、成功したので非常に満足しています。So, I, I 
you know, you know, that's precisely what I wanted to happen, by which I mean I wanted people to get together, cooperate, you know, their uh, cryptic uh, messages in different languages. So I want people over internet or whatever to try and get together, trying to cooperate, trying to solve it, trying to figure out what else is. So this is precisely what happened. Uh, in, in this regard, I believe this was a success because I wanted to create something that required people from different countries, different parts of the world to cooperate to get solved. Maybe more coming. All right. Wait. Lights back up. Lights back. All right. No. Oh. Stop the video for a second. Stop the video for a second, please. Oh. <laughs> Watch out. The gap in the door. It's a separate reality. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? So everyone can download it for free on PlayStation 4. So whoever hasn't played it, please go ahead and download it. あの今は誰が作った何の目的で作ったことあのゲームなのか分かってしまったんで、まあそんなに怖くないと思います。Now it shouldn't be that scary because as of as of now you already know who made this game, who's behind this game, what is this game. So it shouldn't be that scary. あのこれはその FOX エンジンとか僕らの名前を隠して、まあ、インディーズの、まあ、とあるグループが作った、えー、わけのわからない謎のゲームとして、えー、ダウンロードしていただいて目的も何もかもわからないその情報が全然ない中だからこそ怖いっていうそういうシチュエーションを狙ったものなんで、まあ、今やるとそんなに怖くないと思いますけどそれでもまあ怖いので<笑>一回試してみてください。So one of the intentions behind this game, uh, of course, we hit uh, the Fox engine that we ourselves were involved in this project. Uh, so people, when they downloaded it, they never heard of PT, they never heard of this development studio. Uh, the game in itself doesn't even give you a purpose, uh, doesn't tell you what you have to do. So this in itself, <coughs> we believe that it gives fear to people, the fear of the lack of information, what is this? So, I mean, by now you all know this. Still, we believe you will get a scare of this game. The Fox engine was built in the Hill of Silent Hill, and the Indies was built in the Hill of Silent Hill. So, actually, uh, the Fox engine was built in the Hill of Silent Hill, and the Indies was built in the Hill of Silent Hill. So, the Fox engine was built in the Hill of Silent Hill, but it had to look like an independent developer game. So, we had to drop the quality 
intentionally. Uh, quite a bit. すごい難しかったです。今まで一番難しかった。あのフォックスエンジンでもっと綺麗にかけたり、もっと操作感とかも良くしたり、もっと驚かしたりできるんですけど、それ以上すると、まあプロが作ってるっていうのはバレてしまうんで、そこのさじ加減っていうのがなかなかできなくて、一番今までで難しかったですね。That was the most difficult thing I've done this far because using the Fox engine, we have we can do better graphics, better playability, but we want to lower that because if we To raise that, the bar that high, people would know that it was a, a big studio behind it. So that was one of the most difficult things I've done so far. I know the home pen no silent hills, the stuff to the game, you know, this is a little bit of 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 a But one thing that you have to keep in mind is that if a game is too scary, people just won't play it. The movie or the attraction, the rail, the roller coaster, when you're going through it, you can get scared and get out of the ride. But walk through the game, you can get scared and get out of the ride. I don't think it's a scary game, but we want to do it. 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 怖がりの人はちょっとできないかもしれませんけど、そこは期待してもらっていいところですね。So the one thing in movie, in movies or in attractions, you know, it's about to start playing the pressing the play the play button or just getting in the ride, and you know, if it gets too scary, just keep your eyes shut, and somehow it'll be over. But if it's a game, people will just stop, you know, and won't keep on playing. So that's why、uh, there's a limit of how scary you can make a game. But in this case, we're totally ignoring that. And you know what? If you don't want to keep playing the 3D game, so be it. We don't care. That's the game we are aiming for.、Uh, we're aiming for a game that will make you shit your pants. And、uh, so, yeah, that's. Pants no kaya mo te kudasai. So please make sure you have、uh, some changes. The limited edition will probably include a, play, a pair of tro- trousers for everyone. <laughs> Collector's edition. The other thing is PSN. ところに行くと PT のこのビジュアル出てます。で、PT っていうのがあって、下に 7780S スタジオっていうのがありますけど、これ何のことかわかりますか、ね？この制作スタジオの名前。So this is the logo that you will see when you go to the game in PSN,、uh, the 7780 Studios. Any idea what 7780 means? I don't know. Is it?、Uh... As for Silent Hill, or yeah, what, what's,、uh, yeah, I'm sure it has some significance. <laughs> like Moby Dick, what, what's the significance? Eh, to 7780 の S の S は Silent Hills の S です Correct. As you say, actually, the S in 7780s is the S for Silent Hills. Yes. 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 静岡というあの日本ではサイレントヒルのことを静岡静岡県っていう県エリアがあるんですけど静岡と言われます。So the thing is,、uh, when you say Silent Hill, when you translate directly to Japanese, it's it's、uh, Silent is Shizuka and Hill is Oka. Now there's a prefecture in Japan called Shizuoka. So、uh, gamers, it's kind of gamer slang in Japan to call Silent Hill Shizuoka. でえーとまあ、7780っていうのをグーグルで入力すると、まあ、50番目から60番目から70番目ぐらいに静岡県の面積と出ます。So if you Google 7780,、uh, somewhere in the results you'll get the 7780 square meters is actually the area for、uh, that prefecture, Shizuoka. はい。And as you can see, the picture is very amateurish,、uh, very low quality. 
This is the backyard of one of our staff members. <laughs> so, it's just, so it's just a Japanese backyard. <laughs> we thought someone also might catch him that is like typical Japanese backyard. Uh, so there are hints spread all over the game. Wow. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it was a, a cool way to announce the game. And I'm amazed that you're able to work on that and work on, uh, obviously, Phantom Pain as well. So you're going to be very busy at Kojima Productions here over the next few years. So, yeah, we have to get the Phantom Pain uh, finalized, and on parallel, of course, we have to work on Silent Hills. Yeah, the one problem that we have is that in our staff, uh, uh, in our team, we have a lot of people that are really, really scared, uh, you know, they get scared easily, including you know, myself, so we <laughs> had a lot of problems on who was going to debug and test the game. <laughs> So in the studio, actually, we had a small booth. Uh, it was like a small camp tent uh, to play it, and we had uh, team members from the Phantom Pain go into and just, you know, monitor the game, tell us how, what it feels like, and put the headphones in and get them in the tent. で、大体怖がりの人はヘッドホンを半分外して、え、その点灯のチャックを開けて聞いてきますね。ここのグラフィックはおかしいんじゃうかとか、いろいろ。怖いから聞いてくるんで。what uh, most people did at uh, this uh, it's typical behavior in people that get scared easily. They just put one headphone off, they open the tent and just like, "Hey, I think this graphic is incorrect." And they just start throwing questions just like that's when they're really scared. まあでも怖がりの作るホラーっていうのは一番怖いので、ホラーヒッチコック <laughs> But as Hitchcock said, probably the scariest, uh, the scariest thing is made by the people that get scared easily. So, so everyone that out there, everyone here at least uh, that hasn't tried there on Twitch, uh, hasn't tried PT, please make sure you try it. So it's a very scary game. So I mean. If you get scared easily, you know, just get together with your friends or whatever, or on Twitch with different people, and just go ahead and play it. Very cool. Good. All right. Well, oh, lost the microphone. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kojima. Uh, it's been amazing to have you uh, with us here, teasing obviously PT, Silent Hills, and uh, lots of great Metal Gear stuff. I'm sure still to uh, still to be told, and uh, we look forward to hearing more about Silent Hills. I'm sure at other events uh, coming up soon, uh, with an S, right? Not hill, hills. 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 So it's, it's in plural. Uh, plural fun, plural scariness. Plural scariness. Okay. <laughs> That's something new. All right. Well, uh, everyone, let's give another round of applause to Hideo Kojima for coming out and doing this whole event. Thank you, Mr. Kojima. And remember, you guys can go check out the Metal Gear demo in Hall 7 1. Have a great Gamescom. Thanks so much for joining us, and thanks for watching live on Twitch. Good night, everybody.